Hi guys, Dan here with another video, and uh, tonight's little project is going to be working on my bandsaw. Uh, the pit lift is still in the motion, I'm just working on the logistics of it. Uh, <clears throat> the floor center drain being the biggest issue, I want to keep that, so I'm thinking about putting the lift over on this side of the garage. The only thing on this side of the garage is the power door, or power garage door motor, uh, which I'll most likely just have to move over to that side, uh, so I get a better ceiling height, and um, then just start rocking and rolling. The only other consideration with this side of the garage is I have that side door right there. So uh, I'm still working on that, but that'll get solved soon. So anyway, uh, the other night I was cruising on Facebook Marketplace and I saw this little bandsaw and I couldn't pass it up uh, because this is a older, it's a 1971, I think, uh, Rockwell Delta 10 inch bandsaw. And um, <clears throat> I mean, all the pieces were there and uh, the, the owners are really, really nice. But anyway, um, what I want to use this for is instead of woodworking, which I do a little bit of, but not as much as I would do metalworking. So um, I want to tune this thing up a little bit. And in the meantime, I want to convert it over to a metal bandsaw. So here we go. Okay, so if you look here, uh, I mean, it's covered in wood dust. Previous owner specifically used it for woodworking. And this is the blade that he included. It's a very small, I don't want to say quarter inch, maybe even smaller than that, um, wood blade. I mean, it, it cut fine, worked great, um, but this machine is capable of doing uh, metal as well. But there's a few modifications that we need to make. So, um, let me just show you. On this back side here, this back pulley goes down and is driven by a belt by the motor down at the bottom. I think that you guys can see that about there. And so <clears throat> it had a five inch pulley on here and it spun the blade relatively fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a pulley that's a 10 and a quarter and that should hopefully slow down the RPMs enough for this pulley which drives the blade. So we're gonna put that pulley on now, we're gonna put the belt on, then we'll put the blade on and let's see how it goes. Okay, so here you can see this is the previous pulley that was mounted like that. And this is a 5 inch pulley, uh, V belt pulley, you'd see on like a lawn tractor or whatever, with a 5 8 center bore right there. This is a 10 and a quarter pulley with a 5 8 center bore. And uh, let's see, I mean, it should in theory fit onto this spindle. Let's see, is there a flat spot or something? I'm gonna work it on a little bit. Hmm. I'm wondering, maybe the shaft is a little bit damaged or maybe this is just a little too small. So I'm gonna take a little file to it and see if I can bring down maybe the size, get this pulley to slide onto the shaft. Now you might be asking why I went with the 10 and a quarter inch pulley, and I really did use no numbers in this circumstance. Uh, really what it came down to is I wanted to slow down the RPMs by a half. Uh, being the old pulley is a five inch, the new one being a 10 and a quarter, so that gives you about half the RPM which it did before. And I think that, if it were to still be too fast, would be a, a good point for me to make some modifications down by the motor and put a larger pulley on there. Fortunately though, it worked out in my favor. I was now able to slide the pulley into place and then tighten down the set screw to lock the pulley onto the spindle. I then put on the belt. I had to do a little bit of shimming in terms of sliding the two pulleys in and out to get the belt at a straight line across. Um, then I just took the belt and I rolled it onto the top pulley and you can definitely see it's a little too tight but I'll upgrade the belt to a 66 inch that should be just around perfect for where it needs to be. I really can't beat Amazon, and I'm having parts and pieces 
literally next day. I love, I love helping out the small hardware shop owner, the mom and pop shops, but when something you know is in stock, or the part is definitely there, it makes all the difference. Ooh, this is sharp. It just got me a little bit on my hand. Okay, let's uh, open this up. Things gonna, this thing's going to fly open like a slinky. Ow. Ow, ow. Woo! That hurt. Okay, let's slip this in here. Okay. After making a few adjustments, I was able to get the blade to sit properly into where it needs to go. Um, and then once I got it in place, I tightened up the top nut, which pulled the top pulley up and tightened the blade to tension. Okay, so you can see that last cut I just made was right there and I've been running test cuts all night. But I am super stoked about this machine uh, just because the amount of time that that would have taken me to cut that with a cutoff wheel would have been a few minutes. And you can see this buzzes through it in a few seconds. So uh, I bought the whole machine for 200 bucks, put another $50 or so into it, blade being around 20, the pulley being around 20, and the belt being I think $10. Uh, future plans for the machine is to clean it all up and get all the wood dust out of it and then put a 66 inch belt. I can feel the 65 is getting a little warm and uh, it's just a little too tight on those two pulleys. But other than that, I mean this is going to really set up a lot of opportunity in the future for fabrication. Uh, projects that I do and you will see I got a lot coming. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching this video. Subscribe and like and comment and uh, more videos are definitely to come. Thanks again. Bye.